Wow. Ah, thank you very much. <laughs> hmm. The menu bar is still there, but that's how it goes sometimes. So, welcome at Scout24. I'm glad to have you all here today. And um, yeah, we're really looking forward to what will come in the next uh, couple of two hours here with all the talks, with the keynotes, and maybe the discussions afterwards. But before we start, I'd like to give you a little and short introduction about how Scout24 is using Atlassian software and services. And I'd like to highlight some other stuff, for example, the top vendor with which we work for a couple of years now. You can see the roll up here to my right, um, which is our partner in crime for, I don't know, four or five years, very long, very good partner. But let's get started. You, I guess, know Scout24. We're Auto Scout, we're Immo Scout, we're a they are big connected marketplace. And I hope we're the leader of the connected marketplaces here in Germany. And I'm Patrick Lee. I'm an employee tech engineer. I work at Employee Technology, which is the successor of the so-called Corp IT. I guess you're all familiar with the term Corp IT. It's a little outdated and we think we should rethink Corp IT and how it's done and we renamed ourselves to Employee Tech. Um, just to give you a short update or insight about what Employee Tech is doing and how we're formed, we have four core teams. The first one is the user service, um, where a couple of peaks uh, who are <laughs> available here today are also part of. Then we have the application service who's responsible for all the core applications we have to deal with. And the reason why we have Jira, Confluence, and so on in our company here. Then there's the IT procurement, of course. Because every colleague, every employee needs technology to work with. And last but not least, the business service, where I want to highlight a case later on. I already told you that we're responsible for a couple of applications here. We have 59 core services which we support, which we provide for the company. But that's not all. So don't worry, I will come to the Jira topic very soon, but I'd like to give you still the introduction here, why we had to rethink some things we had to do with uh, Jira software, service desk, and so on. So just to have some numbers here, in the last year, we created around 870 accounts. This has to be managed. You cannot just do it, um, go to the Corp IT or a service desk and say, hey, I need an account for person X, Y, Z. You have to have a workflow, you have to have a process, you have to work with HR and so on. Which in fact also resulted in some impressive numbers for a company with around 2,000 employees that we had um, around 20K tickets the last year. Around 5,000 calls presented to our user service and around 8,000 bar visits. Another fun fact, we have 52 native, different native speaking langu languages here and the overall user profiles are English, German and some Spanish, some Italian and so on, which sometimes makes the work for us a little hard because if you don't speak Spanish, you cannot really support someone. So we're very happy if someone is really taking the English language. So, um, I know it, it sounds like a little advertising here, but you will understand why I'm showing you this today. So. 4.9 customer satisfaction. This is what we achieved using Service Desk, obviously. Without Service Desk, we couldn't have get the insights from our customers from the company. It's not only our employees who are using these technologies, it's also external partners we work with. Oh, that's the bonbon. <laughs> so, but let's get started. We all know the thing. We all know the drill. We use Jira software, we use Confluence, we use Service Desk, and of course, Optigeny, of which I will not talk today, but it's important to mention. And those four form a big ecosystem, and we're 
we are kind of proud that we use it for a very long time, over five years or somewhat. And with all the interconnected applications, we have to not only deal with applications, we have to deal with the teams, we have to deal with the departments. And so let's get started how we do these things with Jira software, what we use it for. To give you a little oversight about what we do, we have 360 project spaces, 140 unique teams, and around 1.5K active users. Doesn't sound that much. But in fact, with a little team, it's quite an effort to manage all this. And most of the time, people think with Jira, ah, it's for development and product teams. And so the term developers, developers, developers came to many minds, the old Balmer stuff. But is it really only for developers? The quick answer is no. It's for developers and product teams. It's, of course, also for business function and for cross-functional teams. In the end, we'd like to build services for the company and enable value-driven decisions. So when get started using Jira for a team, it's not only, hey, yeah, let's build a workflow. I can bore you now with how to create workflows, but I guess the whole community here knows how to do this. So try to rethink was the, was the effort we, we took here. If a team approaches us with, hey, yeah, we want to use Jira, can you please help us? We need this workflow, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We sit down and say, is it really the workflow you need? So we may only start with a, with a little workshop. Let's sit together, get some flip charts, and write down what is really going on here in the team, in the department. And maybe you will find some cross-functionalities. So in a potential very <laughs> old school um, organizational structure, which is very horizontal, so you have HR, you have IT, you have platform, sales, product, and so on, and so on. We came across that together with Confluence and Jira and other applications of the Atlassian ecosystem, we have something like the interconnected organization. In fact, we have still the horizontal organizational structure, but the teams, the departments, and everyone else is working somewhat interconnected, what you can say, or in classic business terms, is a cross-functional structure. So by, let, let's take this little flower here. The junctions are the very important and interesting thing. You have very much data in those teams. Every team that works with Jira, with Confluence, is producing, excuse the term, a shitload of data. And you have to work with it, you have to structure it, you have to ask a team if it's really necessary, or maybe get in data analytics to, to form an overall view. So for example, you can use Easy BI in Jira to get some more insights. And so that's what's the team, what drives the teams and the departments and so on. And I'd like to give you a little example of what we do here with this cross-functional and interconnected organizational structure by sticking to the little flower here. We talked a lot, or not we, but people talk a lot about product and how to design products using Jira, putting everything inside. But who is selling the product? It's the sales team. So we have to get both in the boat. And in between those two teams, there's another one. Because it's not only sales who is selling the products, the goods, it's also maybe the campaign management, which, which is organizing all the sales efforts. And three years ago, we put our CMC marketing um, campaign management on Jira. And within three years, they created campaigns worth of 45 years in complete duration, which is a tremendous number, I think. And beforehand, they worked with some other tools. They had some offline nodes, they organized just in some little talks, and by enabling them working like they should or would do in Jira, they managed to work on 950 campaigns 
this is just a little insight. And Lucas, who is um, working much with CMC marketing, that's how it's called, obviously, here, um, is still a fan of Jira and likes to have some advanced features in the future. And we started by getting some user story mapping inside, and they used or started to use Scrum methods and so on. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> So in fact, the challenge is to get all the teams aboard. You have the classic developers, which are excited to use Jira, or by the time we are reaching now, there are other products people like to use. Because let's be honest, Jira for developers is not that agile as it should be. So especially in the data center and server appliances. On, on cloud, it's a little different, but we're not talking here about cloud instances. We have a server instance. And what we discovered a little recently was the Stagir project creator, which is a very interesting little piece of software. We can create templates. We can work with teams and form best practice workflows for them, with them, and publish them to the company so that everyone else can participate with it. So it's not only forming the ecosystem for the whole company, it's also spreading the word, creating the knowledge that it exists. And so we can enable our internal customers to be independent from us, which in fact reduces the admin effort because everything has to be done by somewhat root admins in the applications <coughs> where we could think or just maybe ask at Lessian if this really is necessary if it's possible to split the, the right management like it's possible in cloud instances. So in fact, it's about working together with the customers and the peers in the company. And I'm, I'm sticking to the word customers because in our company, we treat our employees and colleagues as customers, which I guess should be done either way. And I'd like to show you another little example which we had to deal with in the last couple of years. It's about communication and communication flows. So I guess you all know this little picture. You have plenty of people, plenty of people are sending mails, and then your inbox is starting to burn somewhat. But that's not it. People continue to write you emails and Slack you, and they will always have one more question, which is perfectly fine. This is how it should be. And we should not try to avoid this, but we have to add some structure. If we don't add any structure to this communication flows, we will end up with something like this. Some information goes in, some go out. In the middle, there's a big mixture of everything. No one really knows what was going on. And for our colleagues and customers, it feels like this. So what to do now? <laughs> and thanks to a little application, which is called the service desk, <laughs> we can solve this all together. We can spread the knowledge not only inside the companies, but all together. And one case we had very recently, or which is now eight months ago, or at least 10 months possibly, was a very conservative driven department and team. Do any of your teams or departments in your companies like finance are working with Jira? I, I don't think so. But there's, okay, one, two, three. And one hand is going up and that's, that's correctly because we put our payroll on Jira. Because every communication flow, everything that happens needs to be structured. It needs to be tunneled. And together with payroll, we created a new finance services system, which Luisa likes to say it's a 360 degrees finance services. And she's able to work with the customers directly. There is no in-between stuff. She can perfectly delegate the information. The whole team is suddenly able to for example, do some proxy work if someone is on vacation or got sick from the other day to another. And there's some interesting key fact. Before they used Service Desk, their NPS, 
was on minus 45, which, well, we can discuss what is happening. But after we implemented Jira Service Desk and created a new environment where every for every team member who felt safe then, they increased their NPS to plus 35 just by changing the way they communicate. Well, of course, because such or much communication was automated, but it was automated a way that people felt they are hurt or that you credit the people who are actually reaching out to you. And another little fun fact is that their customer satisfaction is now by 4.9 stars, um, which is pretty good, I think. Well, better than our team. We have 4.8. <laughs> so, two examples already. And what I want to say with all this is that we shall not forget there are many other teams besides developers and product teams. There are finance services, there's even HR, customer care, facilities. You know, you have seen the guy um, who's helping here with the IT stuff. They are using Jira as well. All their requests, everything is done in Jira, which again enables us to have some junctions with the team to better communicate together, to better plan what's coming up. Such event like this today is not only planned by employee tech, our team, it's also planned by facilities and we have to get the event team on board, which unfortunately is not yet on Jira, but we're working on this. <laughs> yeah, and so on. Many teams can work with this system. It's our challenge to get rid of the fears for them, to get them all aboard make some workshops, I know it's a silly word, do some workshop here, do some workshop there, but you get, you get the idea, I guess. So I a little lost track here. <laughs> <laughs> um, working with customer care, sales and procurement creates junctions, creates synergies, actually. And as employee tech, we think we should actually broaden the efforts. We should get rid of any obstacles. And one, what we recently did was thinking Jira and Confluence and every other application as an ecosystem, but also as an enabler for other ecosystems and applications to communicate with the outside world, with the inside world, using one little little thing, which is called the C prime zil, the simple issue language. I guess you're quite familiar with it. And they added something which is HTTP endpoints, which actually enables us to work with the Jira API using our own HTTP request. So putting a JSON payload into the system, do some magic, and then make our customers happy. And to show you what I actually mean, it's now a big, vast picture, I'd like to talk about the past a little bit. Because yeah, we are in the 2020s, software, application architectures are very modern now, interfaces are fancy, you can click everything, everything is interactive now. But I guess you all remember this shit, <laughs> sorry for the language, which is a Outlook form for a so-called BAN, for Bedarfsanforderung. So basically a new employee request within the company which you put to the IT service stating, hey, yo, I got a new employee, please onboard them. They need a computer, they need whatsoever, they run on the coast center XYZ, and so on. And yet, we can still create new forms, we can make them fancy, and we can make them interactive, I hope it place here, <laughs> so that the whole screen is filled out with the information that the peer can focus on what to do next. But in the end, does the process really change? Is it a complete different workflow? Not really. And why should we really think about the workflow in terms of Jira if there are applications which are really good at this? Again. 
so this little n border thing here, I don't know if you know n border, if you recognize the application, which is basically for employee onboarding, having workflows from the over the whole life cycle, the, from the first contract sign until they leave the company. So and the software is very good at this. But to get the interface to our systems, Jira and Nborder needs to communicate. So and Nborder needs to communicate with other applications. And this is what we recently done, which actually creates very happy new starters because they are just confronted with the information they need and the information they need to provide to us. Everything else is in the everything else the, the hiring manager has to take care of. But again, just presenting a good forum, which is nice, clicky, some liquid interfaces, doesn't really make sense if you do not provide the right workflow behind it. And just be honest, sometimes it kind of, hmm, it sucks working with Jira forms. So Service Desk is getting better at this, but if you have uh, something like a new employee request, which is a form of 25 entries, it, it's not fun working with Jira forms. They're creating a new issue, putting everything in. You have no interchanging or interlinking with Confluence or somewhat, which is explaining you the stuff. This is where other applications can step in and help you out with this. And we'd like to encourage every one of you to think about, is it really necessary to build it in Jira or is there maybe an application which we can interface with, which is really good at this job? So we'd like to point out that the seamless integration with every other ecosystem enables us actually to form an ecosystem which is sustainable for its own. And to keep the metaphor of the little <laughs> flower here, the interconnected organizational structure, we think that with Atlassian services, Jira, Service Desk, Confluence, and even the application I didn't mention yet, the Ops Genie services, they can enable us as a company to build a better and sustainable ecosystem. So, and there's so much more to talk about, but I guess not yet. It's a couple of minutes left and then Daniel is uh, on stage. And so I'd like to thank you all very much. Um, I think room for questions is after <laughs> the talks here. And so thank you for your atten uh, attention and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking to you later. Thank you. <laughs>